Good morning, good afternoon, geeks and gamers of all kinds. I am Shill, and you have joined us for a very special episode of Geek Tavern Radio. I am joined with... Dax. Dax, bud, whatever your name is these days. Dax, mm-hmm. I'm under on Twitter now. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> Dax, I'm under. You've changed your, uh, your, your Twitter account, and we have figured out how to recover you from the Infinity Stone. Um, <laughs> last week, Mike Bundy and I talked about how Thanos snapped his finger, and you were sucked into the... I was one. Yeah, I did listen to it. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought that was great. Yep. Yeah. Um. Of course, just uh, been really busy. Thanks so. with my day job. So I mean, as of right now, um, in terms of gaming or anything like that, my gaming has been dramatically suppressed for the past. I want to say three weeks. When you do get like five minutes, what are you buying? What are you selling? Um, well, I just recently bought Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze because I missed out on it, which um, it, it was funny because, you know, I listened to last week's episode. You guys, of course, once again, did phenomenal. Yeah, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Because <laughs> um, I, I don't know, it seems as of lately, not to get off track, but it just seems as of lately, um, I'm running out of stuff to listen to on podcasts and i mean i always listen to our episodes of course um especially when i'm not on them um but i bought tropical freeze and just like you guys stated last week it's a good game if you missed it when it came out on the wii u and i was one of them and you know between that and hyrule rule warriors um, did you pick that up too no, no, I haven't. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait. I think I'm gonna wait till that goes down in price. Uh, I've heard mediocre reviews. I mean, on all three versions, you know, that being well, whenever it first came out, the Wii U, and then the, the DS 3DS, version, yeah, the 3DS version, and then this version. Of course, I don't know. Um, it, it's one of those ones what I do have an itch for because uh, I've played the Dynasty Warrior games. Yeah. And uh, I always liked them. I always enjoyed them, uh, despite the fact that in most cases, they really tend to be, uh, I want to be nice about this, senseless. But <laughs> but I hear Hyrule Warriors, man, is like so easy. Like I watch the gameplay and a lot of enemies just stand around. Okay. They don't even attack you. And I understand, like, it's more so an easy game to play, but, yeah. Um, But I'm having some good fun, you know. When you can pick up Donkey Kong. Yeah, it's it's a good game to, once again, pick up on the go, have in your hands. And um, I'll I'll say this much. Um, I'm one where I like to... I'm motivated to try to collect everything in a game oh, okay. uh, for the most part. Uh, for the first two hours of playing that game, I didn't even go past fifth level. Oh, wow. That's it. Yeah. There's, there's so much to collect in that, in that game entirely that it's, it, you, you don't want to do that the first time you run through it. Um, you want to, you want to replay levels. And I think there are some, uh, it's just some really challenging ones that, that you can spend a lot of time on. Oh, there really is. And there's multiple routes that you can take through the game. Um, like each, I won't say each level, not all levels. Um, but certain levels have, uh, basically you could say different routes. Um, and I think that's going to be the reason on to why I go through and play this game because clearly on each world, I'm at least, you know, now that I'm, I think I'm in a sixth or fifth world. I'm, I'm on Donkey Kong's Island finally. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's stages, there's levels that I've missed. So I need to go back and try to find alternate routes, hidden routes that can lead me to unlocking those levels. But um, as of right now, that's what I'm buying. Uh, what, today's the 23rd, so tomorrow being the 24th, um, I am going to be purchasing Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which is an 8-bit like throwback uh, pays homage to the Castlevania games. Um, 
it's uh it's don't don't mistake in it for blood stained um what is it ritual of blood or something like that i think it's ritual of blood yeah um, which is a game a very castlevania um symphony of the night type of game that's coming out soon this is made by the same creators and it's basically made and it's going to be put out there tomorrow kind of just to um occupy and keep people busy until you know the big their big game comes out that being right. um bloodstained um ritual of blood which i'm absolutely excited for so yeah that's what i'm buying on um i uh know that uh, you love those 8-bit throwbacks because back when Shovel Knight came out, uh, that was one of the games that you constantly told me that I needed to pick up. So uh, let me know if this if this um, this Bloodstained Moon is anything like Castlevania. There were a couple that I played um, on the Game Boy back in the day uh, that I really liked. So um, yeah, I would love to I would love to give it a try at some point. Uh, anything that you're that you're disappointed in that you're selling? I don't, I don't know what it is, but it wasn't a bad movie at all by any means. And I, it's just a movie that I feel like hollow. Like it wasn't complete for any reason. It's a great movie, but I just feel hollow on it. Like something was missing. Um, Deadpool two. Wow, I'm surprised at that because like there's a lot of hype surrounding that that whole movie. Mm -hmm. Um, people are really excited for it, but it doesn't hit the mark like the first one did. Well, I think a lot of people oppose, um, what I had just stated. Um, you know, there's still a lot of people out there, people that I've had discussions with, um, you know, I've went on to a couple of forums, you know, to see what people are talking about in terms of, you know, did they like the first one or the second one better? And I mean, across the board, a lot of people really, really, really like this movie. Um, and most people I think would say that the second one is better than the third one, but I don't know, man, it was just one of those movies. Me and the wife went and saw it and there was some, they, they of course, you know, kind of uh, reiterate or um, display the, the same jokes the same uh obscurity um i'm trying to describe it so they, they it's do basically they just the a new toilet humor, humor thing. in a way yeah new toilet yeah. Humor thing over again uh, yeah and, and that's not through the whole movie though don't get me wrong um mm -hmm. ryan reynolds co-writed this and he of course more than anybody else besides the creators of deadpool um understand Deadpool um, and they they use a formula of course you know with the certain same jokes and whatnot but there's a lot of new stuff there there's a lot of new jokes um, the story it was um, I will say more than I thought it was uh, the morality of the story there's actually morality to this story um, so, I mean, overall, it, it was a really good movie. But again, it's, um, I don't think I would watch it again. I'd probably watch the first one multiple times, not this one. I've seen the first one so many times. Like, it's, it's a, a great film. It's, it still holds up. And uh, if, if you guys aren't familiar with the Deadpool movies, I mean, they're incredibly vulgar, family friendly. But uh, they, they're very funny. So I would recommend jumping into them. And I'm going to go see the second one, I think, on Thursday this week. Yeah, so. they're, well, they are family friendly. If everybody in that room is over the age of 20. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel you. All right. So I mentioned at the start of the episode that this is a very special episode. It's not often that we get to uh, sit down and talk about one of our favorite games on Geek Tavern Radio. Uh, and one of those games that, that we don't talk about much is Magic the Gathering. Right? Mm -hmm. So, like, Dax... I know that you're very excited to share the big news from from the creators, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about Battle Bond spoilers as well. But uh, for those 
for those of you who don't know about Magic the Gathering, every set that comes out takes place in a different area, a different plane, as they're called, in, in Magic. And we're in the Dominaria plane right now, which is a classic plane from old Magic. They've done a lot of nostalgia marketing successfully. Um mm-hmm to a lot of folks who have been playing the game for the 20 year the 20 years that it's been out or 25 years that it's been a 25 years that it's been out wow um so they did a lot of good nostalgia marketing and in the story and the lore they've been culminating um the storytelling behind the game to this big event that's going to take place and dax where is this next big event going to take place one of the favorite planes of all magic players I mean, if anyone follows the story, you could guess that it was going here, but in all honesty, I didn't think it was going here this soon. But we're going back to Ravnica. Woo! Yes. Um, so we're going, we're returning, returning. We're uh, returning return, back return to a second the return. Time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I, man, it caught me off. So last Friday, Wizards announced that they were going to have a, um, well, it was days prior to this, but they announced that they were going to have a big, huge spring announcement. I think it was a discussion of five people, and they talked about the set, um, how they were going back to Ravnica. So what is Ravnica? Um, Ravnica first uh, appeared as Ra- the set was called Ravnica City of Guilds. And what made it so cool and so unique is that it was comprised of a plane that was a full, huge city, and it was compromised of 10 different guilds. And for the market, for the fan base, this was very, very, very popular because Wizards of the Coast never did anything like this. And by guilds, what I mean is um, there's five colors in the color pie of Magic the Gathering. And so each guild is assembled and created by two different colors of mana. So, you know, you got green, blue, that's the Simic. You got Rakdos, that's red, black. You got um, the House of Orzhov, which is um, white, black, and so on and so forth. And this was so popular that it made Magic the Gathering become very relevant again because they had just gotten done with the Kamigawa set and prior to that was mirrored in. And we'll just say that was kind of the dark age of Magic the Gathering. So for this set to come in, it um, actually, no, I think Time Spiral may have actually been before Ravnica or maybe it was after. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Uh, anyhow, um, it it was so popular um, and so successful. So by 2012, Wizards of the Coast decided that they would go back and they would revisit that plane once again. Um, and that's where I started playing Magic, right? Like, so I jumped in around that time period uh avison restored um the end of innistrad and the beginning of return to ravnica so while i'm learning how to play magic they're introducing the fact that you can have two colors in a deck and they're they're printing cards that are going to help you do that um and like it's just it was just such a fun event right because you chose a guild that you would belong to in the in the pre-release sets and then you like identified with that guild and there were 10 and you battled you had the rivalries like i chose is it that's my favorite guild i still play is it colors in my commander deck consistently Mm -hmm. that's my favorite one to play um you know so it's it's just so cool the multicolor effect that they have and the lore that they build around the multicolored guilds yeah and uh, what, what's so unique to, again, uh, kind of piggybacking off, and off what you said about how unique the guilds are, what made them so unique was their different abilities and yep. just their colors alone in themselves because, um, you know, things that blue and black can do together, each color is restricted in its own, own way, but that's what makes it so unique. So something for Demir, they can't do stuff that red or white 
um, could necessarily do uh, what a spell or a card that was, you know, printed uh, for, you know, white um, is capable of doing. Um, but man, I'll tell you what, it's, it's just really cool. They're going back and the five guilds that's going to be released, uh, for the guilds of Ravnica set are Selesnia, Boros, which Selesnia is green, white Boros is red, white Golgari, which is black green is it which is blue red and demir which is blue black and i'm looking at this right now and i think when you compare this to the first set back on return to ravnica i think this is generally the same except i i'm not even looking at it right now but i believe the only thing that's different between now and the return to ravnica is boros is in this and azorius isn't i think uh these five clans are generally the right. same. Except it was Selesnia, it was Selesnia, Azorus, Golgari, Is it and Rakdos? Oh, it was right. Ra- okay, so right it there, was Rakdos. Demir. Okay, Demir, so Demir is in the first set, and Rakdos will be in the second this time. So they flip flop two. Yeah, yeah, they flip flop two of them. Uh, mm-hmm. And the Ravnica Allegiance set is going to have your Azorius, your Rakdos, your Grol, your Stimic, and your Orzhov, and those respectively are white blue black red green red green blue and white black um and then the third set will likely it will have all 10 guilds linked together um and they have not yet added the name of that set um and my guess is because it is going to have uh something to do with the story yeah it definitely does and and they, of course, don't want to put it out there because they don't want to hint or give uh, any clues at, at all whatsoever to, um, you know, what the story is going to be. Uh, story-wise, not to get too much into it, but the big bad guy, uh, Raul Zarek, is assembling a team of uh, villainous planeswalkers um, to... In some of it is uh, what, what I mean by joining him, some... From some of these planeswalkers, it's not necessarily willing. Um, it's kind of against their will for some of them. But anyhow, it it's all pointing back to Ravnica in the previous uh, few blocks. The stories have kind of alluded to the fact that we would be going back to Ravnica. And from what I understand, from what I've picked up, this is going to be the big showdown, supposedly, <laughs> against Nicol Bolas. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, Nicol Bolas is this elder um, planeswalker elder dragon, dragon that um, is uh, very manipulative. He's always two steps ahead of everybody else, and he more so uh, plans everything, every action, knowing every consequence and how those consequences lean towards more so his progression on what he wants yeah i mean so we're going back to ravnica the set's going to be 259 cards uh which is huge generally for any set that's um in a block which this is supposedly a non-block expansion to magic the gathering it just so happens the next three sets are going to be based around ravnica um 259 is uh, it's pretty big. Uh, yeah, it's a big card. Pretty pull. big set. Um, yeah. We're going to see the release on October 5th, 2018. And we can probably expect, um, I'm not sure if there's any big expos uh, between now and then. Uh, but Pat, besides there'll be a that, couple packs between them. You know what I'm expecting? I'm expecting to spend a lot of money on standard <laughs> i i got out of the standard money pool because um you know just because it, it is a money pay rotating sets you you don't uh you don't stay uh you don't stay good unless you spend the money and i'm i'm probably going to be playing standard because ravnica is a very fun set and i want to be engaged in that a little bit i might play it on magic arena yeah, and I mean, Magic Arena has uh, been the hype as of lately. It's been a great alternative for yeah. people who do want to get into Magic the Gathering and maybe aren't 
necessarily comfortable with going out and spending money on cardboard or even going on magic the gathering online and you know buying virtual cards um which right. for me i'm completely against so uh magic arena uh is a great alternative route uh my if guess, you're not looking my guess to sp- going to be open probably to uh, public beta or even to the public by this point uh, in October. That's my guess um, because this is going to be a very popular set. So there's going to be a one, there's going to be a big demand to get hands on cards and play it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, it's nuts. So that comes out October 5th. um, Guilds of Ravnica. Mm -hmm. And like I said, 259 cards. Shill, generally, what has Wizards of the Coast always done in terms of card pool size when it goes from the first set in a block to even the second or third? Oh, I'm not sure. They generally get smaller, correct? Yeah, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I don't know. I'd have to look back at this, but Ravnica Allegiance, the second set in the quote unquote non block expansion comes out January two thousand nineteen and the set size is two hundred and sixty four cards. Wow, so they got bigger. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and I it's probably gonna sound silly because um if there's anybody who's a big fan of Magic the Gathering and they like to fact check, they can probably, you know, go back and be like, hey, uh, Gate Crash and Return to Ravnica, which were from the 2012 sets, um, they probably had that high of a card pool size. Because again, we're trying to make up and, tr- you know, I know that Dragon's Maze was kills. incredibly small. I know that oh, Dragon's was. Maze was one of the smallest sets that Magic has ever produced. So, um, yeah, that was that was a smaller one. It had cards from all ten guilds, but it was still one of the one of the most incredibly small sets, and it was the third in that block. So I mean, it they they do follow a trend, you know. Third third block or third sets in a block are usually smaller. We'll see what they do with this one. Um, and you mentioned that the October fifth uh, date is um, coming up. You know, it's it's what it's May now, so we're looking at five months from now. But even yep. sooner than that, in uh, in just one month, Wizards is releasing a multiplayer set called Battle Bond. Yes, and I'm really excited. I've been looking over cards from this, and I'm really excited for some of the reprints that are coming. Uh, so this is a two-headed dragon format, um, two versus two players, or you could probably do even more than that. You could probably do two versus two versus two versus two. You know. Uh, and have a full full set of eight people, but um, man, it is looking really good. Um, the The spoiler sets are coming out slowly. The, we're we're getting more and more. We've got a grand total of sixty four cards that have been spoiled mm-hmm. so far. And I think the one that has blown me the most away out of this has been doubling season. Wait, so, double, doubling season's one of the cards. Yeah, Doubling Season is getting reprinted in this set. Holy crap, so, I completely missed that. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm blown away by this, right? So for newer folks who don't may not know, you know, what Doubling Season does, it says that if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many tokens instead. It's a green card. And if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many counters on that permanent instead. Oh, wow. And it's, it's a green and four colorless. And it's so incredibly powerful in like Planeswalker decks, right? Because when a Planeswalker enters the battlefield, it hits with double the amount of loyalty counters, right? Yep. And like a, a lot of folks sit back and look at planeswalkers and judge them based on whether or not they can do their ultimate ability when double when they enter with doubling season right yep. so like to get a doubling season reprint is absolutely insane i never mm-hmm. thought they were going to reprint that card again because it's almost broken yeah right so like oh yeah absolutely i'm just um, blown away what's what's one of your favorite ones that you- um a matter of fact one of my favorite ones was just revealed within a matter of uh, moments. 
Um, however, you know, long it took us to set up our podcast and our equipment and stuff because it was not here before and it's here now. It's called Last One Standing. It's one red, one black, one generic mana. It's a sorcery and it says, choose a creature at random, then destroy the rest. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Yeah, man. Wow, that um, is brand new. I as think of the beginning of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The general consensus too around this is a lot of people are actually excited for this. Um, one, because of the reprints, such as Doubling Season. Another one was Food Chain, uh, uh, a very popular uh, enchantment. Uh, very beneficial if you're playing that card. But again, it really, again, the Battle Bond, It this set is to push the, um, more so to, push a format agenda, get more people into two-headed giants. Um, I know Wizards of the Coast said that they wanted this to... Food uh, chain? I'm not seeing food chain on here. Oh, yeah, food chain was just revealed. Where? Or greater good, I'm sorry. Greater good, not food chain. Yeah, but I mean, there's just so many... Yeah, so many great reprints. Like, you know, Shill had uh, said doubling season which um completely you know uh, i didn't even see that i definitely overlooked that but true name nemesis right uh, which legacy staple of yeah which was a commander card that was a that became a legacy staple this was this card alone people were buying the commander deck out there right just for this card alone um but you know and then things like greater good um, I mean, Swords of Plowshare, that's Swords of Plowshare. But there's, I don't even want to go through them all, but there are so many cards. There's so many cards I haven't even actually seen. Then I thought, right. I, I, wow. Right. Wow. And, uh, um, you know, we, we do have some time to go through, you know, some of our favorites. Um, so, like, I'm telling you, man, when it comes to reprints, Diabolic Intent is here with, with some beautiful art. Um, I saw... Um, I saw land tax with some new art. Uh, mm-hmm. It looks really great. Um, True name nemesis is same art. Chain lightning's back, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I love chain lightning. Um, you know, there's some, there's just some commons that have gotten reprinted. Um, Impulse is back, and crack and hatchling, one of my favorite cards ever. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding, by the way. We used to. It's an inside joke thing. But uh, some of the some of the newer cards are really sweet. Um, those new lands are really cool. Uh, yes. So they're they're basically reprints of just dual lands that uh, if you have two or more opponents, they enter untapped, and they're they're green, white, red, black, mm. uh, black, blue, white, blue, and red, green, and they're just straight lands that enter untapped if you have two or more opponents. Which will yeah. be uh, which will be staples in the commander format. People will run those forever because they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, another thing that makes this set so cool, of course, is the mechanics. Um, right. If we want to touch base on that, uh, the mechanics they brought back partner, which completely made sense because again, they Wizards of the Coast wants the two-headed giant format agenda to be pushed. Um, There's even to say that they're really thinking about pushing it as an actual sanctioned competitive, uh, you know, uh, format in tournaments. Right. So where you typically always see one versus one tournaments, they really want to push these two versus two tournaments. So they bring back partner, which partner was introduced in I want to say Commander, Commander 2016, Commander. I believe it was. 17, I don't yeah. recall which one. Um, so by example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read off Soul Blade Corruptor. It's, it's a five converted mana, cost one black, four generic, three, three, partner with Soul Blade Renewer. So remember how I just said I'm reading off the card Soul Blade Corruptor, and now I'm reading off it's text and it's saying partner with soul blade renewer. When this creature enters the battlefield target player may put soul blade renewer in 
to their hand from their library then shuffle so it sounds pretty cool it sounds like you don't even necessarily have to have soul blade corruptor and soul blade renewer in your same deck right like i can be running soul blade corruptor and you and i shall can create two decks that really complement one another in terms of you know different combos yep. um really assisting one another and you could be re- you could be running soul blade renewer right you know and i mean there's a lot of different variables and criteria on to you know why you know maybe you know one one of uh, the you know me to say was running one of the cards but not running that complimentary partner card um other mechanics in the set. Assist. One of my favorites. Yeah, I love assist, man. You want to read that off? Yeah, so assist is a new mechanic to Magic the Gathering. Um, what it basically says is that another player can pay up to this amount of mana of the spell's cost, right? And it's the it's the generic mana. It's the colorless stuff that they can add to. Um, so, for example, Game Plan is a card that I really love. Uh, it's a six converted mana cost, um, one blue, five colorless. It has assists, so they can pay up to five colorless of that, sp- play- that spell's cost. Um, and it says each player shuffles their hand and their graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards, exile game plan. So it does not say your partner player. It just says another player. Right. So like you could even play politics on these types of cards if you're playing in a big multiplayer group and say, oh, hey, guys, um, we really need we really need to reset the 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 hands. Um, You know, somebody just tutored for something that's absolutely incredible. Uh, Could we could we team up and and do this and get rid of their hand? You guys, another example, Uh, play of the game. It's a sorcery. It's too white six generic assist another player may another player can pay up to six of this spell's cost exile all non-land permanents um i think she'll gave a great example matter of fact it was an example that i didn't even think of how assist can be used in the politics especially in commander because all these cards will be commander uh viable but I know, and I'm another, most excited for that, man. Like, yeah, like I'm looking at out of bounds, and I'm like, man, counter target spell with assist. They can pay three of the mana. I could just be like, all right, guys, I have this, but I don't have the mana for it. Can you, can you help me out with this? Because, um, you know, he, he this person's gonna win the game. We've got to shut them down. I need help casting this counter spell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, uh, Jake's about to win. Cody's about to win. Um, <laughs> but uh, another thing too is, I mean, another example, um, you know, besides that is if you and I shall are just work, you know, playing a game together of two headed giant and, you know, we need maybe a card in my hand to get out on the field, but I just so happen to have another card that would really benefit us. And you're looking good for, you know, uh, mana because maybe you only you know prior to me which oh yeah let's let's explain that real quick um you got basically uh no one takes separate turns on a team like if me and chill if it was we would basically play our hands at the same time um pretty much but of course we could coordinate and um you know position on what stuff we cast first or anything like that but if shill's got extra mana over there and he's already played all that he can really play or care about on his turn for our team he can assist me with some of his mana so i think this is really awesome um it just it, but still it blows me away the fact that these cards can be used in commander now in yeah Colorado. exactly right and speaking of Commanders, I mean these these two new planeswalkers, uh, Rowan Kenrith and Will Kenrith, um, one blue and one red. Um, man, these two have explicitly written on them that they can be your commanders. So, it's, it's, yeah, yep, it's gonna be really awesome. It, it is gonna be awesome, and there's a lot of text on them, and give them that. But these are the first, um 
partner planeswalkers. Yeah. Which is uh, very, very cool. Um, and again, if you want to see all these cards, everybody, you can make your way over to mythicspoiler.com or magicspoiler.com. It's typically where we go to um, see, um, I want to say, the vast amount of right all these spoilers. But, I mean, is there anything else that stands out to you? Oh, definitely, man. Um, I absolutely I- love Stunning Reversal. Um the the it's a four drop converted mana cost one black three colorless the next time you would lose the game this turn instead draw seven cards and your life total becomes one so that could break somebody's combo in commander like i'm just sitting here and i'm looking at over over these cards arena rector uh is a white card one white three colorless it's a one two human cleric whenever it dies you may exile it if you do search your library for a planeswalker and put it on the battlefield then shuffle your library there's so much good stuff in this set that's gonna change the way commanders played it's gonna change the way that um that is it's it's just gonna change the way commanders played and really be a fun set to play together uh around the kitchen table it absolutely is and i think another reason why it's so attractive is because um battle bond is going to be a 254 card set this is going to be released next month and according i, I don't know how this is going to work um I don't know how many packs are in each box, but I think a box costs the typical $90. Mm-hmm. Um, but packs are... 36, go, well, 36 booster packs in a box. Okay, uh, so it, played it is a two-headed more. giant sealed draft and more. Yeah, um, because I'm, I'm, you know, between Magic Spoiler, unless if this is a typo... Um, the packs are going to cost two ninety nine rather than three ninety nine. I don't know. I yes, that is correct. I um, am getting a price from CardKingdom.com right now that says that a battle battle bond booster pack is going to be two ninety nine. A battle bond booster box is going to be eighty nine ninety nine. So I wonder. I'm curious. How many cards are going to be in these packs? Does it explain how many are in there? Fifteen card each. Wow. It's a full booster pack. Wow, for two ninety nine. Yep. Ugh, that kind of makes me worry. I mean, how hard I mean I'm okay with it. And you know, here's why. Oh yeah, me too. Here's why I'm okay with it. Because they are gonna print the ever loving crap out of these cards. (laughs) And they are gonna have all these great reprints. The 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 um the level of printing that they're going to do from these is going to help the secondary market a lot alleviate prices for commander players, which yeah, seems right. to be what wizards is really doing. Uh, they're really trying their best to help the players who want to be engaged in the game and the secondary market. Um, there have been a lot of great reprints in the past few years with stuff coming out of, um, modern masters and, uh, what was it called? The legacy one. Iconic Masters. Yeah. Um, and there has been a lot of great reprints in those that have really drove down prices. I mean, I was able to pick up um I was able to pick up some of the the tutors, the one drop tutors for less than twenty dollars, you know, um, wow. because they were reprinted in in those sets. I mean Worldly Tutor, you know, nice. took a took a big hit. You were able to get that Enlightened Tutor. I was able to pick up for like seven bucks when when it got reprinted. Yeah, um, really, really good stuff. That Mystical Tutor stuff that got reprinted that was just way way too expensive, but the reprint brought the price down, and it was just wonderful. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, anything else in terms of magic? For I want to do a full yeah. I want to do a full set review, color color wheel, and all. Uh, just to talk about some of the best cards in the set uh, and talk about um, what we're excited for and what we're not, what's yeah. draftable and what's not. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm really excited. Magic has a uh, good direction that they're headed in right now. And I think that we'll see a rise in popularity, a rise in standard players with stuff like Ravnica coming. Um, the second set of Dominaria is probably going to be starting to get spoiled soon. Um 
and we're we're looking at stuff like Magic Arena to get Magic into the hands of more players, so much more accessible. I mean, they're they're trying to create an economy in that game that is uh, super feasible to the casual player. So I'm really excited to to see more people get into Magic over the next couple of years. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for next week, we are going to be t- touching base on a huge event that's coming up in a matter of weeks. The video and game that, culture, baby. Yep. Absolutely. And that is E3. So get ready, everybody. And uh, really, really stoked in terms of predictions. Um, you know, some of the rumors floating about, and I know you and Mike Bundy touched base, uh, pretty much on quite a bit of rumors, uh, circulating around Nintendo and what we well, might Pokemon be seeing. for sure. Yeah. yeah we talked Pokemon last week sure. about Pokemon. Um, that was our big discussion. Uh, we did talk to Nintendo online last week. Um, I'm sure we'll get more details as E3 creeps out. Um, Absolutely. Gonna, I want to predict those next 10 games that are going to be included in the NES online experience. Um, But yeah, no, next week we're going to go full E3 um, hopes, rumors, predictions, um, and probably the the top title that we want from E3. So uh, if you're interested in that, stay tuned for next week. It's going to be super exciting. Um, The guys here at Geek Tavern, we are always trying to stay engaged with you. Dax, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Daxamunder. That's D-A-X-I-M-U-N-D-E-R. Mm-hmm. And you can find me at shill underscore DS uh, on Twitter. We can just have a conversation, engage with you folks there, check out the things that I'm posting, because it's not always uh, video game related. Um, I like to do uh, some motivational stuff, too. Um, and you can find Mike Bundy at Mike Bundy 316. He is on Instagram as well at Mike Bundy 316. Uh, and he is on YouTube, Mike Space Bundy. Uh, really simple, really easy. And uh, you can follow, follow all of us at the Geek Tavern Twitter. Um, make sure you guys hop into our Discord as well, which is pinned at the top of our Twitter. We'll have it in the show notes here. We chat with folks all week long, and we would love to talk to you and play some games together. Absolutely. I've really enjoyed uh, talking magic. I really uh, – we, do, we don't do this often. It is a special case. Uh, mm-hmm. so, <laughs> so I have this great idea to close the show. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so at the end of every episode – we do press start and keep on gaming. Yes. <laughs> Tap those lands and keep on casting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.